I tell you that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the Lord. Do not doubt that. King of kings and Lord of lords, mighty God, holy one of Israel. The deception has gone out. The lies have been taught. And fulfillment of the words of Jesus says that many false prophets will arise. And deceive many and even try to deceive the elect if that were possible. So we see that the false prophets and the, those who are deceived are not the elect. How do you recognize the false prophets? Wow, look at how my eyes are burning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Whoa, I'm looking at the reflection of my eyes and it's like. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jesus, see, sometimes God's going to give people every reason in the natural to be like, this guy's not a true man of God, he's a false prophet. So God will make my eyes reflect the light just right to make him think, I'm not God, I don't like that God teaching anyway. Anyway, Jesus is Lord. So here's what... Here's what the Lord is telling me to say. See, I don't even know what it is yet. Seriously, my mind is completely blank. I'm like, what is it, Lord? I don't know. I really don't know what I'm about to say. Oh, it is a fulfillment of God's word that still small voice is a fulfillment of God's word. Renee M is a fulfillment of God's word. Many false prophets will arise and deceive many. <laughs> And teaching false teaching, teaching that after the rapture, there's the, the two witnesses are preaching the gospel and there's a revival. So it's okay if you miss the rapture, because after all, we're going to have a big revival. That is a false teaching. That is a misleading. How about this for a false teaching? The whole Creflo Dollar teaching about the love of money and just friendship with this world. Oh, you can have what you want. Just believe God for everything and get all this stuff and prosperity, prosperity. Oh, we're going to just have prosperity. Listen, I believe in prosperity. If you're faithful with the little, God will make you ruler over much. But why did Apostle Paul choose to go to appeal to Caesar? When they said to him, you could go free, Paul, if you just withdraw your appeal. He said, no, I appeal to Caesar because the Lord told me to. And he lived his life in jail and ended up ultimately put, being put to death. When he could have gone free many years before that. If he would just withdrawn his appeal to Caesar. But the Lord told him, he said, listen, you're going to witness and speak before kings and before the top people of the nation. I need you to go. Appeal to Caesar. Why? In order to attain to a greater resurrection. What would Creflo Dollar teach his people in that situation? God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to have all the blessing and be prosperous. God wants you. Oh, I would say come out of that jail cell, Brother Paul. What is it to be a sheep versus a wolf in sheep's clothing? A real sheep is going to be a, someone who serves God. But a wolf in sheep's clothing is someone who looks like a sheep, acts like a sheep, talks like a sheep, but their teaching will lead you to hell. That's where the wolf part comes in. Some people, I get comments all the time, This guy's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Am I? Or are you the wolf in sheep's clothing? Who's really the wolf? Where's the wolf? I'm here telling you, you who are lukewarm, God's going to vomit you up. You still have time to repent. Get your heart right with Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Meanwhile, what Stephen said is a fulfillment of God's word. He said to the, those who killed him, 
He said, you stiff-necked and rebellious people, you always resist the Holy Spirit. And right then, they, oh, we can't handle what you're saying. And they, and they ran in, they rushed in on him and beat him down and killed him. Like I said in my other videos, what is prophecy? What is prophecy? It's what John the Baptist said just before they killed him. It's what Stephen said just before they killed him. It's what Jesus said just before they killed him. It's what Paul, so Paul said just before they put him in prison, tried to kill him, and then ultimately they killed him. What is prophecy? It's what the two witnesses were saying just before they killed him. Killed them. So you have the fulfillment of the false teachers teaching falsehood. So here's some of the things they teach, and I know I've gone over this in many of my videos already, but they're going to try to tell you, oh, the rapture is going to happen before the mark of the beast comes out. And after the rapture, you can still be saved. And they deny what the Bible says. <laughs> Listen, that's great teaching if you want to gamble with your soul. If you want to go to Las Vegas and put your soul on the table and roll the dice, that teaching is fine. Do you really want to gamble that if you're left behind? Now, now the Bible makes it clear that those who are left behind have missed the bridegroom and the door was shut. Those who are left behind, Jesus says, Behold, I come like a thief in the night. Blessed is he who is ready. Anybody who's ready is going to go up when the bridegroom comes, when Jesus comes. If you're not ready, you don't have a second chance. Did the foolish virgins have a second chance? When Jesus says, depart from me for I never knew you, do those people have a second chance? What I'm saying is, do you really want to gamble with that and, and be left behind? What about this gamble with your soul that says we're all going to be raptured before the, before the mark of the beast comes out? Why don't you go to Iraq and Syria and tell that to the people who were put to death last year for their faith? <laughs> and what does it mean for Babylon the Great to fall and then the mark of the beast comes out? Babylon the Great has not yet fallen, folks. Don't you realize that history can change in a moment? World War I. Did you know there was peace and safety? And then all of a sudden there was a little assassination in this little nation over here in Austria. What does that have to do with Germany attacking <laughs> and starting World War I? What does Francis Ferdinand have anything to do with World War? That's the point. Did you know that there was peace and safety and prosperity in Europe? The map was static for many years. What do, you, what do I mean by the map was static? Well, after a war, the map always changes, doesn't it? Depending on who wins, one nation gets bigger, another nation gets smaller, some nations disappear completely. We know that after World War II, we know the map in the Middle East changed. So what if I were to tell you there's going to be another change in the map coming soon? The map of the United States of America and the world is going to change. Right now, even China is starting to try to change the map. You know how they're doing it? By invading the Red China Sea and building new islands in the middle of this sea. They're changing the map already. Right now, the map is already changing in Iraq and Syria. And all the Christians in, the nor in North America, not all of them, but... See, the Bible talks about these false prophets will arise in order to deceive the elect if that were possible. That means everybody who's deceived by this teaching, these teachings, it's very well possible they are not the elect. They're not chosen of God. The weeds among the wheat, they're only there to choke out the fruitfulness of those who really are the wheat. And what happens when you wake up one day and there's more weeds in the field than there are wheat. And don't you think that's what the enemy is doing anyway? What happens when you sowed 
you know, when you sow wheat, you don't want certain crops, especially corn. I don't know about wheat, but I know that corn, you want to plant every little corn seed a certain distance apart so that they can grow properly. I'm not sure if it's the same with wheat, but what I do know is if if that if if the seed in that field is sown properly, it's distri distributed properly, and when the enemy comes, you know he's going to dump as much seed as he can on that field, on God's field. I'm just saying, so when we look at the church and the body of Christ, what if I were to tell you there's more weeds among the wheat than there are wheat? Anyway, the point is, still small voice, Renee M., Creflo Dollar, Joel Osteen, these are all fulfillment of these end time teaching where it says people will no longer be willing to endure sound teaching, but wanting their ears tickled, they'll turn aside to fables, fairy tales, fantasies, wanting their ears tickled, they're going to gather unto themselves, teachers are going to teach them what their itching little ears want to hear. What do their itching little ears want to hear? The lukewarm, you know what the lukewarm want to hear? The reality is, the truth is, the Bible says that when persecution comes, they quickly fall away. And that there will be a great falling away. So the lukewarm, you know what they want to hear? They want to hear there's not going to be a great falling away. They want to hear that we're going to be raptured out before persecution comes. That's why that teaching is so proliferates so strongly. And it's those weeds among the wheat that are causing that teaching to proliferate. It's not in the Bible, folks. Read your word. If John the Baptist was put to death for his faith, if Jesus was put to death for his faith, if Stephen was put to death for his faith, if Paul, Peter <laughs> were put to death for their faith, and then you look throughout the Bible and you see at the end times, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, and they love not their life so much as to shrink from death. And at the very end, the last two guys on the face of the planet who are still serving God are put to death. I'm talking about the two witnesses. What do you ha think happens in between John the Baptist and Jesus and the two witnesses? To sit there and say that there's not going to be, that it's not going to come near any American Christians just because, oh, well, <laughs> we're a Christian nation. For how long are we a Christian nation? And what, wh how do you know that the map's not going to change? How do you know that that Islamic symbol <laughs> isn't going to dominate when God finally says, you know what, the whole Christian church, just like he did with Israel many times, he says, Israel has gone astray, they have worshipped other gods, they have served Baal, but I have reserved a remnant, a remnant for myself. What's going to happen when God looks down on the, on the United States of America and says, you Christian nation are now the main producer of pornography. You Christian nation are now the main producer of ridiculous gangster rap. Violent films and movies, ridiculous distractions, the idols of this world, the friendship with this world, and most of the false teaching coming out of Christianity is coming from America. What are you going to do when God looks down and sees that on the United States and says, it is time for Babylon to fall? What are you going to do? See, these people who believe that we're not going to, that, that, Basically, you got to deny what the Bible says. You got to basically teach falsehood and lies in order to teach that there's a revival after the rapture and in order to teach that we're going to all be raptured up before the mark of the beast comes out. When the Bible makes it clear that when the rapture does happen, there will be great distress unequaled from the beginning of time until now and never to be equaled again. And those days are cut short for the sake of the elect. Not for the sake of the foolish virgins, not for the sake of the disobedient weeds among the wheat, but those days are cut short for the sake of the elect, because the persecution is so great and the times are so distressful. And again, the Bible says that that day will not come until first there be a great falling away. How can there possibly be a great falling away unless there's first many, many false Christians? In other words, during the time of the Apostle Paul, 
there probably weren't enough weeds among the wheat for there even to be a great falling away. In other words, the earth is ripe for the harvest. The earth is ripe for the great falling away. The great falling away, ha there has to be a lot of false Christians and a lot of false teaching in the, in the church in order for there to be a great falling away. And then you look at the church right now, you look at North American Christianity, you look at the whole world of Catholicism and the whole evangelical world, and you'll see the biggest church in America is a giant lukewarm church. All the preachers who have money are teaching the love of money and friendship with this world. And all the YouTube channels who get all the views are these false teachers who claim to meet with a Jesus who seems like he's on some sort of antidepressant drug. When the real Jesus is victorious and in glory and seated at the Father's side. He's not freaking out about these end times and crying his eyes out. And he's not hes not some wuss who's begging his false whore on the beast bride to come to him. The real bride of Christ is right there at his side and they're together every day in love with each other. Listen, the the Spirit and the Bride are saying, come Lord Jesus, come, because they want Him. They're not saying, we need more time. That is the great falling away. Those people who are asking for more time will also be part of the great falling away. Those people who think that we're going to be raptured before the mark of the beast and before great persecution comes to North America, those are the people who are going to be part of the great falling away. People who are teaching that that's going to happen that way and that you can still get saved after the rapture these are the teachers who will who have taken the who have taken the way of revelation chapter 22 verse 18 and 19 they will also they will not make the rapture they will be left behind themselves and those who follow them will be left behind and if you read revelation chapter 16 you'll see what happens for those who are left behind?